And here we're going to do an example using Van der Waals equation. Here what we're, what we're dealing with is we have um, 10 moles of oxygen gas stuffed into a 5 liter container. I mean stuffed because you put 10 moles in a 5 liter container, it's going to be very, very dense in there. And the temperature is 30 degrees centigrade. Now, in an ideal gas, we can easily figure out what the pressure and the volume should be. Um, well, first of all, the volume is going to be assumed the volume of the container. And the pressure is the pressure that we'll get when we plug in the temperature, the number of moles, and the volume. So, and you can say that ideally, we can say that the volume is equal to 5 liters, and the pressure is going to be equal to nRT divided by uh, the volume, and so N would be the number of moles, which is 10 moles. R is 8.314, that would be joules per uh, mole per Kelvin. The temperature, 30 degrees centigrade, we have to add that to 273 Kelvin, that would be 303 Kelvin, because we always have to convert the temperature to Kelvin. And then the volume, since I use this uh, gas constant, I need to use the volume in cubic meters, so it would be 0.005 meters cubed. All right, and that will give us the pressure in Pascals. So let's go ahead and figure that out, what that is. So we have 10 uh, times 8.3. 14 times 303 divided by 0 0.005 equals, and let's see here, that's a pretty big number, isn't it? Ha -ha. Yeah, that is equal to 5,038,284. Of course, I don't need that many significant figures, but just here's the number. That would be Pascal's, and if we then convert that to Atmospheres, we have to divide that by 101,325. There's 101,325 pascals in an atmosphere, so we end up with 49.7 atmospheres. So that is what we would call the ideal pressure and volume. We take the volume of the container, we take the pressure that we would get when we take that volume, and the temperature that the gas is at, and the number of moles, and that would be the, what we would call the ideal pressure, and then we can go ahead and calculate all the various things we want to calculate with this gas. But, in reality, the real volume associated with the gas will not be the volume of the container, because the molecules take up some space themselves, so what would be that adjusted volume be? So when we look at the equation, PV equals nRT, we know that the volume is going to be adjusted by some quantity, because the molecules take up some space, and the pressure is going to be adjusted by some quantity because there's this interactive molecular forces due to the charges that are unequally distributed, so that the measured pressure is actually smaller than the ideal pressure because of these forces pulling back on the molecules. So what are these changes in the volume and the changes in the pressure? So the change in the volume, y is n times b, the change in the pressure is going to be a n squared over v squared. So let's calculate those values. So first we're going to write n times b is equal to, and that would of course be the change in the volume. That's the easy one. The number of moles times the constant associated with the gas for b, that would be this number right here. So in this case, we have how many moles? 10 moles. And we're going to multiply that times the constant for b, which is 0 0.0318 liters per mole. So 0 0.0318 liters per mole. And of course, moles cancel out, we end up with liters, so that would be 0 0.318 liters. So that is the effective change of the fact that those molecules take up a considerable amount of space and compare that to the 5 liter of the container, which means the measured volume, uh, of course, we would measure the quantity of the 5 liters, but we would then say that the actual volumes of space available to the molecules for them to move around in would be, so volume, ideal, and then notice, to get the ideal volume that we should plug into the equation to get the numbers to come out right, we take the volume of the container and we subtract from that the volume occupied by the molecules. So volume, ideal, is going to be the 5 liters of the container minus the 0 0.318 liters, and so that would be equal to 4.682 liters. And notice what a percent change that would be. If we take the fraction of that, 0 0.318 liters, divide that by 5 liters, notice what you'll get. So 0 
3.18 divided by 5 equals times 100, and that would be equal to 6.36%. That is a significant change from the ideal value that we would use. So if we were to take 5 liters for the volume and plug it in here, then notice we would be off by a little bit over 6% on the actual effective volume that is available to the molecules. Secondly, we're going to change, figure out the change in the pressure. So the change in the pressure is going to be a n squared over v squared. So a n squared over v squared. And since we're dealing with oxygen gas, we come up here. And for a, that the number is 1.36. So that's a change in the atmospheric pressure times liter squared divided by mole squared. So we get 1.36. That would be atmospheres times liters squared the volume divided by the moles squared. Okay, that's a constant associated with oxygen. Okay, n squared, that's the number of moles squared. We have 10 moles, so that's 10 moles. And we have to square that. That means moles squared and moles squared cancels out. And then we divide it by the volume squared. And so the volume of the container, that would be equal to 5 liters. And we have to also square that. So this and this squares. All right, so now let's see what the effective volume or effective change in pressure is so we have when the yeah yeah of course that would definitely help 1.36 multiplied times 100 and divide by 5 squared which is 25 and that would be 5.44 5.44 so that would be the change in the atmospheric pressure so that 5.44 atmospheres now what was the original pressure well, the original pressure was 49.7 atmospheres. That's what we assumed, assuming ideal conditions. But notice that there's actually an effect of that, that the measured value of the pressure would be a lot less. The measured value would be 49.7 atmospheres minus this quantity. And so we have to adapt that pressure by that quantity. So if we actually measure it, we wouldn't measure the ideal pressure that we just calculated 49.7 atmosphere. We actually would measure the total ideal pressure that we calculated minus the adjustment factor. So we can say that the measured pressure is going to be equal to the ideal pressure that we calculated right here using the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, ideal, minus the change in the pressure caused by the fact that there's these intermolecular forces. And so this is going to be equal to 49.7 atmospheres minus 5.44 atmospheres. And notice that would be a difference of, uh, that would be 44.26 atmospheres. So to get this clear, uh, straight, because it's a little confusing, so let's, even though there's a plus here, why am I subtracting here? So let's get this straight. Notice that in the van der Waals equation, the P here is the measured value. So we actually go and measure the value. Let's say we have a pressure gauge and we measure the, the pressure of this gas. We would, of course, expect to read 49.7 atmospheres because that's what the ideal gas equation tells us it should be. But in actuality, you measure it and you only get this pressure on your pressure gauge. and go, wow, what's going on? Why is it different? Well, that's because the intermolecular forces actually cause the molecules not to slam into the sides with as great a speed and the effective pressure is therefore less. How much less? This much less. So this is what you would measure. But if you were to then to plug the measured value into your equation and try to figure out the volume and the temperature and so forth, you get very wrong values. So this is the ideal pressure and the ideal volume of the ideal gas equation. So going back to, f to finishing this up, so if I were going to use the measured value which is this value right here in my ideal gas equation, it wouldn't work. What I need to do instead is I need to take the adjusted equation, which would mean I take the measured value plus this difference to come up with this value right here. This would never be a measured value. And I plug that into my equation, and then I get the right values. And that's how you do that.